Polaris' new ProStar Fury 2.0 is without a doubt the most exciting new power plant in the side-by-side -side industry since Can-Am released a factory turbo on the Maverick's 90-degree V-Twin. Now don't get me wrong, there have been other very exciting performance milestones since then, but you simply can't deny the fact that the industry's first 225 horsepower naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine is a game changer. By now, everybody already knows the basic specs of the engine and that it's based on the four-cylinder engine found in Polaris' slingshot on-road vehicle. But the truth is, there's so much more to this engine than what we've been told so far. From its origins, to its development, to its final design and specifications, we thought you'd like to know more about it as much as we would. So I set up a conference call with the two lead designers responsible for the Fury 2.0 engine, Jen Brady and Daniel Nuterin, and asked them all the questions that I could think of, and here's what I found out. The first and possibly most important thing to understand about the ProStar Fury 2.0 is that despite it being introduced first in the slingshot in 2019, it is not just a slingshot motor modified for off-road use. From the fall of 2015, when Polaris engineers began working on this project, they knew this motor would end up in a Razor. And it makes sense. Why build an engine just for a slingshot when you have other vehicles that it could be used in? From the very beginning, the plan was that this motor would be used off-road. Now both motors do share a long list of common parts though. Crankcases, cylinder heads, and valve covers are just to name a few. And interestingly, they share common parts and specifications with Polaris' two-cylinder turbo motors, including the bore and stroke dimensions and the forged connecting rods. But the list of parts that are different is almost as long, and the question this brought to my mind was why? Why couldn't they just transplant the motor from the slingshot into the Razor as is? And the answer was very interesting. The number one aspect of the motor that needed to be addressed was engine lubrication. Now hopefully a slingshot will not be operated at extreme angles. Polaris' target angle of operation for a Razor though is 54 degrees. When you look at the design of the inside of the engine and focus on the engine oil, it quickly becomes clear that the design of the on-road engine isn't suitable for off-road use. The oil has too many places to get stuck and too many places to hide. To address this issue, Polaris engineers made an extensive list of changes. First, the path the oil takes from the heads into the sump needed to be altered. Then an oil pump was added to the bottom of the chain case to move oil trapped in this location again back into the sump. One very interesting design feature of this engine, something you'll only find in the off-road industry, is the inclusion of reed valves between the bottom of the crankcase and the sump. This design allows the oil to drain from the crankcase into the sump, but not back out of it. It also has the added benefit of stopping oil aeration caused by the movement of air in the crankcase as the pistons move up and down. Now the final change made to the engine's lubrication system was a three times larger oil cooler to handle increased operating temperatures at slower speeds. The next major difference between the on-road and off-road versions of this engine have to do with the transmission. The Slingshot has a manual transmission, the Razor Pro R has a CVT. This difference required not just mechanical considerations and changes, but different engine tuning as well. In a typical Polaris side-by-side, -side, the primary clutch attaches directly to the end of the crankshaft. But because the Fury 2.0 has to accommodate two different types of transmissions, the end of its crankshaft has a spline that mates with the manual clutch on a slingshot and the CV clutch on a razor. Because of this design, the Pro-R's primary clutch is self-supported and separate from the engine. The side benefit of this design is that it allowed for more space around the primary clutch for cooling, specifically around the back of the clutch. Because the CV transmission shifts entirely based off engine RPM, the Fury 2.0 engine needed to rev quicker than its on-road application. Changes were made to lower overall inertia inside the engine and peak torque was calibrated at a higher engine speed. Horsepower was increased from 205 to 225 as well. 
This extra horsepower comes courtesy of a four and a two into one exhaust with longer headers, cam duration and timing, ECU tuning, and higher compression. But as important as these changes are, the base design of the engine itself is of even greater importance. The main goal with the Fury 2.0 was to create a high performance engine that was extremely durable. Which is why every aspect of the engine is overbuilt, starting with the bed plate design block. A bed plate block simply means that the head bolts go all the way through the cylinders and into the bottom half of the block. This acts like a four bolt main in an automotive application. The result is incredibly stiff engine architecture. The block is also a closed deck design. This means that the water jackets around the cylinders aren't completely open. They have a section of aluminum in the middle that divides them. 52 millimeter main bearings are 11 millimeters larger than those found on the twin cylinder turbo engines and a forged crank, forged connecting rods and ultra tough piston design contribute to the overall durability of the engine. Even the exhaust valves and seats have been designed for maximum durability. The valves have a stellite coating and they mate with S33E seats. This combination is so tough, Polaris recommends lash adjustment intervals at 10,000 miles. Most side-by-side -side vehicles of any kind or category will never see this type of mileage in their entire lifetime. Clearly this engine has been designed for maximum durability and maximum performance. Polaris engineers thought outside the box a lot during its design process. The intake side of the engine also incorporates some interesting elements. For instance, the Fury 2.0 engine utilizes a single throttle body, but it's 62 millimeters in diameter. Typically, a throttle body of this size would make controlling idle and low speed operation very difficult. But this throttle body features a contoured bore design, which means the inside surface of the throttle body, where it mates with the butterfly valve, is not flat. It's contoured so that instead of the butterfly creating a large space around itself during the first tiny bit of movement, specifically during idle and initial throttle tip-in, the opening around the butterfly stays relatively small. This made controlling idle and keeping low speed operation very smooth. The ProStar Fury 2.0 engine has set a new benchmark for performance in the side-by-side -side industry, and I hope I've been able to answer some questions that you may have had about it. The takeaway from all this for me is that while they could have just built an engine with more horsepower than the competition and called it a day, Polaris engineers instead built the industry's most powerful engine that is also extremely durable and will last decades if taken care of properly.